hope you guys are doing great out there today. If this is your first time here at my channel, my name is Kyle. What I do is I take awesome high gain amplifiers, overdrives, guitars, cabs, speakers, pickups. I record them with a simple SM57 setup and I give you guys the unprocessed audio on your end. So if you're into E-standard thrash riffs, drop C hardcore riffs, and dudes that forgot to wipe the crust out of their eyes this morning, you're in the right place. Consider hitting the like button and subscribing on the way out so you don't miss any more of my stuff. Thanks. All right, guys, I am super pumped because today we get to visit, in my opinion, what is one of the best high gain solid state amplifiers of all time, the PV Supreme 160. As far as I'm aware, this amp is pretty much the very beginning of the PV Supreme lineage. I don't know if there is an amp that comes before it. John Fields, if you're out there and watching, I'm sure you know. Drop a comment down below if I am incorrect. Pretty sure that this is at least the first head version of the PV Supreme series. And honestly, I still think it's the best one. The tones on this one seem more natural and more tube-like in nature than any of the other PV Supreme amps that came after it. And while I do love the TransTube Supreme, I do love the XL and I do love the XXL, Man, there's just something about this one that just sounds right to my ears, and I really personally dig it. This is actually the second one of these amps that I have owned in my lifetime. I was lucky enough to grab one of these for a hundred bucks. When I plugged it in when I got home, I was blown away at how awesome this thing sounds. Now, not too much before I had purchased this amp, I had gotten into the PV Ultra series of tube amps, and I had an Ultra 120 at the house. And honestly, man, when I put these two up against each other, when I put this against the Ultra 120, they're really, really similar in tonality. They are really similar in feel, especially when you're on the Ultra Gain channel of the Ultra 120, you've got the gain button pushed in. That amp was just super, super tight percussive, it really didn't need a boost to do what I wanted it to do, and honestly, I feel pretty much the same way about this amp. So yeah, with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the tones on this thing. In the beginning of the video, I honestly dialed in a tone that I would be happy to use for not only a hardcore band, but a thrash band. I think it sounds really, really good. I think the only thing that I really feel this amp lacks at times is definition, and I wish it had a little bit more ability to shape the tone, but overall, it's not bad as is. So for the intro clip, I was using my Schecter Solo 2 Apocalypse with the stock Apocalypse pickups in it. I actually think that these pickups really accented the amp nicely, which is why I'm using this guitar today. And I had my MXR M77 Overdrive on in front of the amp. Again, I tried out a couple of these different overdrives and I really feel like the combination of these two accentuated the Supreme 160 really, really well. In the cabinet, we have a Randall 412XL. This is a standard size cabinet with vintage 30s in it. We have an SM57 on the V30. So now that you know the signal chain, let's go ahead and put everything to noon as I typically would and start to dial the amp in, see what it's capable of. Over here, there's a gain switch and a shift switch. We are going to push those out. And the super sat, super sat knob over here is essentially just your gain control, so keep that in mind when we're adjusting things. This amp does have an absolutely fantastic clean channel, like seriously, a really, really fantastic clean channel. I don't do cleans here on the channel, so I'm not even gonna bother touching it, but just keep that in mind. If you get one of these amps and you do need a clean channel, the cleans on this amp are phenomenal. They're super, super good, so. All right, so here we are. We have everything set to noon. We have no boosts out in front of the amp on. Guitar straight into the amp. Let's hear how it sounds. Okay, so obviously not a ton of gain going on. We can probably pump that volume up a little bit. One of the things that I love about this amp is it does not seem to have that kind of upper mid spike that the later PV Supremes have where it's just really hard to dial out and you need to match the right guitar and the right speaker to the amp. Usually V30s do not suit those PV Supremes very well in my opinion and in my experience, but on this amp, I am getting no harsh overtones. I'm not getting that solid state kind of uh, just harshness in the upper mids and the high end. It's, it sounds nice and balanced and sounds really good, honestly. So let's go ahead, let's bump that gain up to about 11 o'clock, see what type of saturation we got going on now. Cool. 
right there. That sounds good to me. When you don't have the gain pushed up super high on this amp, it does tend to sound a little thin. And overall, you do have to push the low end to really get the low end to fill out on this thing. So we are gonna bump that low end because it's sounding a little thin and you have to get it up around three o'clock for it to really start to take a noticeable effect. Well, that's with a boost on anyways. Let's actually roll that back a little bit. Man, that's, that's a really good sounding tone just for a, a solid mid gain tone. That's impressive. Let's get that gain up around noon. Sounds great to me, just as is. Again, we're we're kind of in the mid-game realm. I don't have any complaints about this tone. It's maybe the top end is a little bit lacking a little bit of clarity and detail, but overall it's not a bad tone whatsoever. It sounds natural. It does not sound solid state to my ears. Yeah, it, it just sounds really good. I think PV really got this solid state high gain thing uh right pretty much out of the gate. But let's let's dive into the tones a little bit more. I'm gonna shut up. Let's get that gain up a little higher. We are around 2.30 on the dial now. Sounds great. Um, as far as I know, the EQ on this amp is active much like it is on the Ultra Series. So what happens when we scoop the mids out? Gives us a very scoop tone very quickly. And if we push the mids, it gives us a very bloated tone quickly as well. So if you take those mids out just a little bit and you bump that gain up, pretty much have an early Metallica tone going on. Really cool, right? But if you want to boost those mids just a little bit and pull the highs off, kind of gives you like a boxy style Marshall tone, but you really do need the highs to stay up in order to keep the uh, overall presence and clarity on it because you don't have a presence control on the gain channel of this amp. But it still kind of has that signature PV upper mid uh, kind of honkiness, kind of cocked wah sound. Not as crazy as something like, you know, the 5150, but it's definitely there, which myself, I personally am a huge fan of that sound. But some of you guys out there may not be. But man, I think those mids really sound good pretty much right around the noon mark. <laughs> Now, pushing the highs just a little bit does seem to get it into a little bit of a harsh territory. Let's pull those back to noon. I'm not sure why we keep getting that weird feedback right there. I think it's actually the pickups. They are a little bit on the noisy side. So yeah, finally, let's go ahead. Let's crank that gain all the way up. We still have not even engaged the gain switch on here, which kicks in an additional bit of saturation and compression. We are still just on the regular gain setting. <laughs> Sounds good to me. What I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna reduce those lows a little bit and bump the mids just a tad. I mean, the smallest adjustments make a big difference on this amp. And just a little bit more high end. I'd use that tone for my band Bushido Code all day long.
sounds great. Let's kick in the shift button and see what difference that makes. Again, with the shift off. I feel like having the shift in puts a little bit of a, in my uh, personal opinion, pleasant bump on the upper mids. It actually kind of brings it out a little bit more, makes the amp uh, a little bit more present in the mix without making it sound honky. Let's kick that M77 back in. Let's pull the gain back just a tad. And that is a really cutting uh, uh, high gain tone right there. We're actually gonna pull those highs back just a little bit and the mids back just a little bit and bump the lows up. That sounds really good. Dude, seriously, for an amp that you can generally find on the used market for somewhere around $300 or less, this thing punches so high above its weight. And if you're currently worried about any sort of tube shortage whatsoever, this thing is 100% solid state. So if you find one of these, I've been lucky enough to find one for 100 bucks. I found this one with the matching cabinet with the Celestion K85s for $400, which right now, great deal. But, you know, a couple years ago, that cab was worth 100 bucks. This head was worth 100 bucks. It's crazy to see how much the value on the PV items, especially the old solid state stuff, has really started to climb. But they're worth it all day long, guys, all day long. I would not be mad at using this tone or this amp for any of the bands that I play in. I think it sounds really good the way that we have dialed in right now. Let's kick off the MXR. Let's kick in the SD1 because, again, common overdrives that you might end up using with this thing if you're on a budget. So the SD1 is much more aggressive in the highs. Let's roll the tone back on the SD1. Let's bump the bass on the amp a little bit more mid, a little bit less high end. Seriously, ah, it's so good. It should not be this good for how little they cost, but let's go ahead. I'm going to actually pull the gain way back. We are going to bump the lead gain switch on and we are back at nine o'clock on the dial with the lead switch in. Okay, so not a ton of gain yet, but let's bump it right up to 11 o'clock. Already quite saturated. Let's get it up just above noon. Super tight, the way that it's dialed in right now. Let's actually pull the mids back a tad, pull the highs up a little bit, and add just a little bit more gain. Seriously, guys, this, this amp does not sound bad in any way to me. This thing sounds fantastic. Not bad at 
at all, guys. It's a little boxy in the mids right now due to the lows. Let's pull those lows back just a tad. Pull the mids back a tad. We still have the mid switch in. Let's pull that out. That just kind of gives you a little bit more low mid emphasis. It kind of shifts the mids lower. Put it back in. Let's pull the gain back. Let's get that MXR M77 back in the mix. Really kind of puts the mids in the right place, but it does take out all of our low end. So let's boost that low end up again. All right, so what I'm gonna do on this pedal, I'm gonna actually bump the low end from the guitar a bit. We're gonna pull it back from the bottom on the amp because that does seem to introduce some kind of boxy and kind of muddy low mids. <laughs> Sounds awesome to me, seriously. This thing sounds really good. I think that we're gonna like the SD1 on this setting a little bit better, or at least I will personally. I'm gonna kick in my Deadwell Duality because this pedal does a really good job of boosting the mids but kind of keeping the low end. Boy, do I love this amp. Last but not least, let's go down to drop D or D standard, which is what I really meant. And let's see how this thing sounds down tuned for just a riff or two and we'll call it a day. Sounds pretty brutal, a little bit bright up top. Let's actually get uh, a little less mid, a little less low end, and a little less high overall. That sounds nasty. All right, drop C, and then we'll call it a day. guys that is gonna do it for me today i love this amp this thing sounds really really good but what did you think on your end what did you guys hear through the speakers and through the microphone that i did not hear here in the room do you own this amp or have you ever played with it do you have any experience with it leave all that stuff down below in the comments as I'm always really curious to see what you guys think. If you would like to support the channel, what it is I do here down in the description of this video are all of my affiliate links, including my Sweetwater affiliate link. You click that link. I'll say link a few more times, don't worry. 
Buy yourself something nice from the fine folks at Sweetwater. I get a little kickback, it costs you nothing extra, and it greatly helps my channel move forward. Or consider joining my Patreon community and adding your list to this name of fantastic people and support the channel that way. Seriously, it means so much to me, all the Patreons who support the channel. Thank you guys so much. Last but not least, consider becoming a member of the belligerent amateur community by joining my Facebook group down below in the description. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Kyle here again. We'll see you next time.